As you probably know by now, because you watched our previous episode, adding support for localization to your app right from the start is important. Not sure why? Need a refresher on the basic use of NS localized string? Check out the previous episode. I'll wait. So at this point, your app supports one or more localizations. As you're testing your app in one of the new languages it now supports, you see that a word you used in several different places in the English version of your app needs to be translated in different ways in Portuguese, for example. Maybe your combination poker telephone app uses the word call in two different ways, placing a telephone call and matching a bet. This is how it's going to look like in the localization file. One translation, since these are two uses of the same key, with both comments, so that the translator will know where and when it's used. If you want to separate this into two different translations, this is what it's going to look like. But wait, we now have two translations for the same key. That's obviously problematic. How will the app know which key to use when? Well, one way to resolve this is to create two different keys with the same translation in the English version. This, of course, means that we'll also need to change the code accordingly and use call phone and call bet instead of just call. It also means that unless we provide the translation files for the English version of the app, where the vast majority of translations are simply wrote with identical text on both the left and the right side of the equation, the user will actually see call phone and call bet and not call. But it'll at least allow us to provide each language with the most appropriate translation for it. We won't usually need to use this technique, but it's good to know it's an option, and it also helps demonstrate how important the common parameter actually is. There are several other elements of your app that you should localize when launching to new locales. Images, for example. Let's say you're working on a stock market app and want to use an image symbolizing a successful market so that your users will be happy, optimistic, and eager to continue using your app. You'll probably choose an image that looks roughly like this, right? The problem is that if you show this image to a person in China, for example, they're likely to look at your app in a negative way. There, they have reverse connotations for the red and green colors, so your image should actually look like this instead. The way you do this is quite simple and requires no code level changes. Similar to what we did before with the localization files, all you need to do is use two different images with the same name, one in the en.lproj folder, the other in the zh folder. This way, the English version of your app will use the green image, the Chinese version of your app will use the red image, and all of your users will be happy, which is all we really want, right? We used images for this example, but you can do the same thing with audio files and pretty much any file type you can think of. Xcode also supports the standard XML localization interchange file format, or XLIF. This is especially useful when you have texts that are set via Interface Builder, whether zip files or storyboards. Instead of using the script we used in the previous episode, you can select the project or target in the Xcode project editor, and then choose Editor, Export for Localization. This will generate an en.exlif file, assuming you're using English as your base language. This file will include the strings from all zip or storyboard files, in addition to ones we specified with NSLocalized string. You can send this exlif file to the translator and get a translated version. For Spanish, for example, it will be es.exlif. You'll import the translated files back into Xcode by selecting the project or target in the Xcode project editor and choosing Editor, Import Localizations. The nice thing about using this method, in addition to it being a format that is well known by translation companies, is that it allows you to only worry about new translations, because each time you import localization, the string files are merged with your existing project files. And if you have strings that are set in Interface Builder and not via code, you only need to worry about one localization file per language. Instead of having one .strings file for each zip and storyboard file, and an additional localizable .strings file for the string set via code. The last point I want to make about localization is that it's important to remember that words in different languages have different length. So it's important to test your UI in all supported locales and see that none of the words get truncated, drops a line, etc. English tends to be a compact language, so words may end up being translated to something with twice as many letters, or worse. If you want to display the number of views in a post on your new social media app, for example, you'll need 15 characters in Italian, instead of just 5 in English. And don't forget to consider the opposite case. Shorter words can be just as problematic as longer ones if your UI was designed for a specific word length. My main point is basically be aware of the changing word sizes in different translations and account for it right from the start, already at the design stage. I want to leave you with the concept of internationalization. In addition to having users who speak and read different languages, being a word-friendly app also means that you need to internationalize your app. What does that mean? 
Well, it may mean supporting right-to-left displays for RTL languages, such as Hebrew and Arabic. It may mean supporting reverse uses of decimal points and commas, as is customary in many European countries. It basically means knowing your target audience and what they care about so that you can design the best app for their needs. And happy users lead to happy developers. I hope you found this helpful and will use this new knowledge to build more global friendly apps. I encourage you to look into additional iOS localization topics we didn't get to discuss, such as locking your views while waiting for translations, testing the translations directly in Xcode, or handling different units of measurement. Until next time, I'm Ronnie Rosen for Word 85. Thanks for watching.